Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today I'm going to be testing some gauge blocks inside of a vacuum. Now, these here were sent to me by Ave, another YouTuber. If you haven't already checked him out, I highly recommend you do. He's hilarious and he definitely knows what he's talking about. But uh, he's been doing some tests with these and he came up with some questions that uh, I might be able to answer. So the funny thing is, I actually have a set of gauge blocks here. These were uh, made in the 1950s, I believe. Yeah. 1953 and the whole idea behind these is this block is supposed to be exactly two inches long and This way you can have something to Calibrate your calipers against you know make sure your uh, calipers are giving you the correct readings Anyway, these have been well loved and probably not taken care of the best and so uh, let's see what uh, Abe has got me here Let's pop this open And uh, hopefully these ones are in better condition because if they are in a good enough condition, they should be able to be wrung together and they will stick. Okay. Oh yeah, I got some Ave logo. Apparently this is when they were wrung together. So these have been stuck together for a while. I believe the thinking behind this is that if you leave them together long enough, they might actually cold weld. But uh, that's something that I'll be testing in another video. I think this one's going to be too long as is. Let's uh, open this one up. Okay, a nice big gauge block. You got some protective paper on it. Excellent. Let's see if we got another one in here. Oh yeah, look at that. You know what, I think these are actually brand new. Or at least they've been well taken care of. So you know what, these ought to do just fine. Take these. Rub some of that oil off. You can see they're not magnetic. They do not stick to each other. But if I take them and like slide them together on the smooth part, you can see it's stuck. Now isn't that interesting? And as far as I know, nobody has fully explained why these two stick. Now these gauge blocks, the ends of them are so finely ground and so perfect that they are supposedly within one wavelength of light from perfectly flat. Now, the first hypothesis is that they are so flat and so well machined that when you put them together, you're actually squeezing out all of the air molecules so that no air can get in. It creates a suction force because there's still like some space between them and that uh, means that there's air on the outside, you know, lots of pressure, but there's none on the inside, so it creates like a slight vacuum that holds the blocks together. Uh, very similar to a suction cup. When you push a suction cup up against a smooth surface and squeeze out all the air, you can see that it holds strongly. That's because you create a partial vacuum, and now the air pressure outside is forcing inward at around 12 pounds per square inch at this altitude, and that's keeping the suction cup stuck to the glass. In fact, this effect is so strong that I can take this suction cup and I can lift this 15 pound block of lead here. I can even kind of bounce it around a little bit. In fact, given the surface area of the suction cup, I could probably lift probably 24 pounds with it. If it was a perfect vacuum, of course. But in the vacuum chamber, if I remove all the air pressure, then there'll be nothing pushing against it to hold it up. So the suction cup will fall off. The question is, will the gauge blocks? If they are held together with suction, if the atmospheric pressure becomes to the point where it's so low that the force pushing in is less than the weight of the block, then you would expect it to fall off, right? Well, let's test it out. So here's the experimental setup. I've got two suction cups here stuck to a pane of glass. One of the suction cups is carrying a 100 gram weight just to uh, see if that one drops off earlier. I've got the glass leaning up against a lead block, which I have the gauge blocks taped to the top of. Incidentally, this is also going to be a test to see whether or not uh, duct tape can hold things in a vacuum. Uh, I think it can. I don't see why it wouldn't. And you can see that the bigger gauge block is actually being suspended over this chasm here. And if this falls off due to lack of suction, then it'll land in this rag. Now, uh, right here, I've got a vacuum gauge, which probably won't even start working until I've already got most of the way vacuumed out. But let's uh, close this up and see if it works. 
Okay, vacuum pump on. Look at that. The first suction cup fell off, and the one with the weight, too. Not entirely sure what the vacuum level in there is, but obviously it's less than the suction cups needed. The gauge blocks are, however, still holding fast. Now I assume that the vacuum between these two blocks is more than what the suction cups was producing, so I would expect them to hold on longer. But also the weight's more, so it's not looking good for this hypothesis. So the vacuum is still falling, but it's currently showing 3,000 microns on the gauge. That means I've got 99.7% of the air removed from the chamber right now. That means that the amount of pressure in there, it's far from being a perfect vacuum, but the amount of pressure in there is equivalent to only maybe half a centimeter worth of iron sitting on top of the surface, which means that gauge block, if it was being held by suction, should not be held there. It might be able to if it was only maybe half a centimeter long, but this is clearly more than half a centimeter there. So that hypothesis is busted. So the next hypothesis that I can test is the fact that uh, maybe it's some sort of uh, you know, stickiness, just like the tape. See, the tape has a sticky material that uh, gets into and to the roughness of the, of the substrate and it actually gets in and locks with friction. It's actually very similar to how uh, if you put two phone books together, they, they lock tight. It's actually friction that's holding them together when the material gets interlocked. That's how the tape works. Perhaps something similar is happening to the gauge blocks. Uh, the gauge blocks, of course, they had a little bit of oil on them, so maybe that oil is uh, causing them to link up like that. So I've now thoroughly cleaned the blocks using acetone, so there should be no residual oils on them. Let's uh, take these. You can see that acetone evaporates very quickly. So now there should be just bare metal. Okay, let's put it together. And ring them together. Nope. Let's try squeezing it from the edge here. That way I'm excluding the air. Okay, that felt better. Ah, look at that. It did stick, but uh, when I push harder and slide it in from the side like that, I was still able to get a suction force. So, it is not entirely due to an oil film. Now I guess what I really need to test is whether or not I'm actually squeezing the air out, or if it's the fact that I'm pushing them together so hard. Maybe the actual metal is intertwining with itself and locking in place with friction. So the question is, inside the vacuum chamber, will I need to actually squeeze the air out if there's no air? If they stick upon just contacting and then stay stuck without any kind of finagling it around, then you'd know that it was actually due to them being close and excluding the air. So let's try that. I'll have to think of a way to do it in the vacuum chamber, but I'm sure I can figure something out. You see, I've got the gauge block attached to a string. I can support the string up like this, and I'll cut the string with my laser when it's under vacuum, dropping this gauge block on top of this other gauge block. Let's see if it sticks. So we are down around 1500 millitor. So I'm gonna cut the string in three, two, one. Okay, it dropped onto the other. Let's, uh, Turn the vacuum pump off. Let's let the air back in the chamber. Okay. Let's see if they are stuck. Nope, it is not. And actually, when I'm feeling this, I'm noticing a bit of a problem. See, there's tape on this side of it that's holding it against the glass so these two pieces aren't actually contacting smoothly. See, see that? Okay, so I'm going to try it again, but I'm going to remove the tape on this side of the block. That way uh, it's not holding it away 
and uh, we can get a good contact. Okay, they are together. Let's open it up. Let's see what we got. Okay, and nope, it didn't stick that time either. Been vacuuming till long after the gauge is shut off. So let's uh, cut the string. And let's drop it this long distance. Hmm. Kind of bounced, but uh, it's still on it. Let's let the pressure back in and see if it's stuck. Nope, it didn't stick. I'm trying this again. You can see I've got the larger block on top. Perhaps the added weight will help. Also, I've left the vacuum pump running for 20, 23 minutes or so. Uh, that should mean that the vacuum pressure in here is now lower than it's been the entire experiment. Let's uh, see if that makes any difference. So I'm going to cut the string. In three, two, one. There we go. Also, I think I'm going to let this sit on top of there for a few minutes. Maybe, maybe that'll help. I don't know. Let's see if it's stuck. Nope. It didn't stick to it. Isn't that interesting? I've tried everything I can think of to get it to stick without having it be wrung together. It seems that the ringing process is actually required. Let's uh, see if they'll actually stick. Oh yeah, easily stuck. But I still have to slide them past each other to get it to do it. That is really interesting. So that tells me that it is perhaps something to do with the sliding motion, which makes me think of friction, which means that uh, second hypothesis might actually be true. That it is friction holding them together. Perhaps the uh, metal has got like, you know, the atoms are sticking up on the surface and then the atoms on the other piece of metal, when you just put them together straight, they just kind of bounce off of each other. But if you like slide them around, they'll work their way into each other and lock tight. That's uh, kind of my running theory at this point. The van der Waals hypothesis is that when you put them together, you're trapping a layer of air molecules, basically like putting a bunch of marbles between two metal plates. And no matter how hard you push, they're going to be trapped in there. But if you slide it in, then you're excluding the marbles, or air molecules I should say, over here. That way it's a more perfect vacuum and then get closer together over here. But uh, a way I could disprove that is just simply start over here and then slide them like this. You see now, any air molecules that are rolling along in here would still be there, but it's stuck. Kind of disproves that hypothesis, doesn't it? You know, I actually thought that the marble layer idea was what was actually happening, but from these tests, you know, I don't think so anymore. Now, of course, it might still be the van der Waals force holding these together. In fact, I, I think it's almost certainly is. But it's not the van der Waals force between the two plates. It's like between, like the atoms have to actually be forced together and to get very, very close before the van der Waals force actually takes into effect. So it's essentially friction. But, uh, you know, I could be wrong. It certainly needs more research. But it certainly isn't suction. The uh, vacuum chamber didn't seem to really change how these interacted much at all. It doesn't seem like air actually causes any trouble for it. So, uh, the next video I'm going to do, I'm going to talk, I'm going to go over uh, cold welding, see if I can cold weld something in a vacuum. Uh, perhaps I'll uh, fire up the Sprengel pump to achieve uh, higher vacuum levels, but until then, I'll see you next time.